Hey, this was a really interesting question coming off the Xano community, which was about how to have a completely custom HTTP response code in Xano. And the essence of the problem is if I were to go to, say, my Xano for a second, and I were to uh, just, let's create a, a, a new endpoint. Let's go to API and just pick one of my groups and I'll create a raw endpoint. I'll just start from scratch. I'll call it a test. this. And if I were to want it, usually when I were, if I were just run this, say from a browser over here, like I'm just going to go grab the endpoint URL and we paste it into here immediately get no particular response. Now, if I were to go open up dev tools for a second and take the, the, the data that came over the network, I just sort of refresh this, you'll see it shows up with this 200 error over here. And if I were to open this up, it would tell me that my response code was nice green. It was a 200, which usually means success. And that's an HTTP thing. Like the codes are usually 200 or 200 something means successful. 300 something means you're supposed to go somewhere else. 400 something means usually an error with a request and a 500 usually means an error that was somewhere on the server side. And then there, there are other errors as well, but those are the ones you see most often. And basically you're looking for a 200. 200 means happy times. And Xano knows this and usually it will want to re return 200 and it provides you with this function in here, a utility function called precondition that allows you to like establish a situation in which there was something went wrong. And you can say something went wrong and it's going to be a standard error. And let's just make that all backwards. It's only, it will return an error only when this thing is false. Uh, so basically you, the precondition means that if you run the test and if it passes the test, it keeps running and if it fails the test, then it fails. And in my case, it's just, I'm going to say that, okay, if true equals false, which will always be false, then publish. And if I were to refresh this guy here, Uh, you'll see down here it shows up its test code and comes back with this 500 error. So if I were to go into here, the type of error I was asking for was a standard error. If instead I ask for a not found error, that's usually an HTTP 404. And if I just do a quick publish on that, publish, publish, I can, you know, clear this and then refresh. And indeed, it comes back with a 404 error, right? So like the, these preconditions make it sort of easy to set up standard error messages and standard error types that we associate with our, with, with things that might go wrong in the web page, right? So the standard is the 500. That means something freaked out in the server. 404 means not found. Access denied. I think that's a 401. Too many requests. I think that's a 429. Unauthorized. I think that's a 403. And a bad request, that's a 400. But that's not the entire possible universe of potential errors we want to send back. And this brings us back to the question that came from Zao community, which is you want to send back a 409. And you can do that. And the way that you would do that is instead of using the preconditions as cool as they are, you would just probably compose for yourself. And I'm just going to comment out the precondition here for a second. Just say, don't worry about it. We use this little winky thing. And then sometimes we want our connection because Zano does that to me. Okay. We can wink out the, the, the previous precondition we're using. We know how to do it the standard way, but that's not the interesting way for us. We want to focus on the question, how can we get a 409 response specifically? The way we do that is, is a little bit counterintuitive. We need to replace the HTTP header. That's like the first thing that comes back from what, when we do a browser request. So if I were to go in here to the status, uh, to this code, it breaks it down for me. But you can also usually see the, uh, the raw version of this if we wanted to. If I were to take this URL here, and if I were to bring it to a, a terminal and I were to run curl with it instead, so a much more low level view, and I were to paste this in, it would also say, hey, there's an error. But if I were to do this with a dash V, it will tell me about all the headers that came across. And one of them here says HTTP2 slash 404. And that's how it tells me that it's missing something. It's going to be through this, what's called an HTTP header. Now I need to go back over to my thing here and I can, using utility functions, go to where it says HTTP header here and I can set a custom header. I know this thing should be saying HTTP slash two and the, we know that because of what, what this thing says here. And now we want to say what the code is that comes after that. So I'm going to say after that code, I'll explain why I'm doing this in a second. And then after that, usually I should go to the message that will go along with that guy too. So. Now we need to figure out what the code and what the message are going to be. So I'm just going to quickly set up here a variable 
I'm just going to create a variable and I'm going to say this is called code and the value is just going to be a 409, exactly what this person wants. Great, it's 409, save. And the and I'm also going to set up a message, which is going to be a create variable. I call it a message. And that variable is going to be, okay, duplicate. That way I just have a little message that will go along with it too. And now inside my header, where I can say, which I didn't save, I guess, so HTTP slash two code message. And this is how I like to do string replacement. And now I will do a filter here. I will say, choose filter and I'll choose replace, place. And the search is going to be for the all text, all caps code that I put in there before. And I'm going to replace it with the code uh, variable that I just created. Then I'm going to do the same thing for the message. So we can do replace for message, all caps, and replace it with the variable I just created called message. Update. Save. Now, it, the cool thing about doing it with variables makes it really easy for me to change, as I'll illustrate in just a minute. So the so now I've set this particular header. And remember, anytime I want to test this, because I'm testing headers, I need to publish it. Fine. And now I'm going to go back over this other tab where I just was keeps on looking at test status code and I'm going to refresh it here. Now it gives me back a null, didn't have anything interesting to say. But down here it says test status code and it has that 409 over here. That's exactly the code we wanted. And the if I wanted to look at it in greater detail, I could take a look at it through the curl like we have over here. And I could run that again. And you'll see as HTTP 2 409 again. It didn't actually put in the message, which I'm a little confused about. So message was duplicate, fine. It seems like it did correctly put in the uh, the code, but it doesn't currently put in the message in HTTP2 and whatever. The most important thing here is the code came back, which means that like the browser will see it as a correct type of thing, which will make this person's front end code or the counterparty to the particular API call know that in fact, the reason why it's being rejected is because of a duplicate. And if I want to use some other code, that's actually really straightforward. All I need to do is change this code here to, if I want it to be for, just get the 411 on that. I don't actually know what a 411 error code is, uh, if it's anything at all. And I can uh, scroll up, say publish, publish, relaunch. We'll just clear it out so it's easier to see at the top here. And we'll refresh the page. And it comes back with 411. So this shows you how you can now wire up your own precondition. So instead of using precondition the same way it was, you could actually compose a precondition to create any kind of custom header response you want. All you need to do is say, is, is compose this together with a conditional, right? And that conditional is just like the one I just for if true is, except of course you it would only, it would, yeah, if true is false. And... So if true is equal to false, and then I'll just say else, remember, because the way the conditional, the preconditions usually works, if it's true, it's fine. It's only if it fails that it will uh, do your thing. And in that case, I've just dragged all these things into my else and set the header. And then I do one more thing. I would just tell it to return early, which I like to do through utility functions. And I can return a result and just tell it to return I don't know, have a return, but whatever the message was, right? So that keeps it simple. And of course you can make this into whatever you want, but now instead of like the one liner for the precondition, which works for those five specific codes, you can use this composed up if plus you know, setting the header and doing a quick return to, to have it always, to have it only create the exact code that you want. And so if I were to do publish here and publish, Great. And I were to do relaunch again, I could do refresh. Ooh, it says missing conditional statements. Oh, because I apparently didn't save that there. All right, let's fix that. Uh, so if I just say true, false. Mm -hmm. So if true is equal to false, which of course is never going to be true, therefore I'll never hit the then, I'll always hit the else. I can just say publish. And publish. Okay. So what we're going to do here is we're going to set the return to be of the message. Save that. Turn to the message and we'll say save. See the return is the message. Good. And we'll say publish. And we'll go to relaunch and refresh this particular page. 
and now you can see how it comes back with the, the, the string, right? Which is the fact, the reason why it failed. And it also gives me down here, the 411, which is the error code I was looking for. And all I need to do is just make changes here. And I now have a composed up alternative to precondition that can create any kind of error code and error message that would be useful for whatever my counterparties are, whether it be my front end, whether it be another machine, whatever it is that's working with my Xano backend, because you can control your SAS code entirely. Doing this kind of, you know, deep cut stuff can actually be really important when you're trying to compose APIs together. And it is a thing that we, you know, talk about often that we're working on the harder parts of no code over a state change. So this is a fun one to work on, and I hope it's very helpful to this individual over at the Xano forum.